Hello YouTube, Sidekick here in my AJS37 Vigan. I just have a kind of a short video today. I wanted to finish off the bombing modes in the Vigan. We have covered the plan, DYK and NAV modes of dropping slick bombs. But today I wanted to talk about dropping the high drag version of the M71 120 kilogram. And I just wanted to say a few things about high drag bombing first. I mean, I have done a whole series on high drag bombing called Rolling Snake Eyes, if you want to uh, delve into this topic a little bit more deeply, but there are some important things to know before we go and uh, drop these things. Uh, first of all, like a lot of things in the modern iron bombing universe, um, high drag bombing really came out of experience in World War II. In World War II, as the war progressed, all nations, but particularly the Allied nations, ended up arming aircraft that were never intended for ground attack like fighters, with bombs. Um, now, there were essentially two ways of dropping these bombs, uh, dive bombing from medium altitude, uh, or so-called glide bombing, where the fighter approached the target in a shallow dive at low altitude. Now, the former method had been pretty well developed um, for aircraft that were specifically designed for it, like the Stuka or the SBD Dauntless. But these aircraft were designed specifically for that job. Dive bombing in a fighter ended up being a bit more of a challenge without things like dive brakes and auto recovery systems and even uh, special sighting systems. In some ways, glide bombing was a sensible alternative to fighter pilots because it more closely matched the attack profile that the pilot was used to when they strafed targets. Um, there were some issues, though. Um, the first is accuracy. Uh, in a glide bombing approach, um, you actually can't see the target at the moment that you want to drop the bombs because, well, it's under your nose, especially if you're flying a P-47 or a Typhoon or, heaven forbid, a Corsair. This problem gets worse the higher above the target that you fly. But if you fly too low to reduce this problem, you run into a second problem, and that is that uh, at most strafing altitudes, you are very likely to still be within the blast radius of your bomb when it goes off. And that's a bad thing. And now, this can be partially ameliorated by fusing the bombs with a delay, but that's not always a great solution because it means that the bombs will bury themselves before detonating and reduce their effectiveness. So after the war, and I'm not exactly sure when, uh, based on what I could find, I think it was actually probably after the Korean War, but I, I'm not entirely sure, a new solution was developed um, to stop the sort of self-fragging process. And this was the idea of adding a high drag unit to the bombs, to the tail of the bombs, that would effectively slow their fall so that the aircraft would have more time to get out of the blast radius. Now, a number of different high drag configurations have been tried, uh, from fins that pop out, uh, like the Snake Eye version of the American Mark 80 series bombs, to parachute-like systems often called a balut. Uh, it's a cross between a balloon and a parachute that effectively deploys like an airbag behind the bomb. Either way, the system causes the bombs to drop more slowly, but they also impair the forward progress of the bomb, which actually makes the original problem um, of not being able to see the target as you flew over it uh, actually worse because you have to be even farther over the target when you release the bomb. And this is actually an important consideration because I think sometimes there's a misconception out there, and that is that high drag bombing is somehow inherently more accurate and dive bombing. And this is actually not at all true. And now I can see where you might naively believe it's true because if you're flying low and are therefore much closer to the target, it must be easier to hit the target, right? Well, actually no. To understand, you actually have to think about the whole process of dropping the bomb, not just where the aircraft is with respect to the target, and especially doing it if the bomb is unguided and you don't have a bombing computer to help you. Um, in a dive bombing attack, you more or less aim the whole airplane at the target, uh, sometimes from a fairly great height, and you can see the target all the way down, and you can adjust your aim. And even though the timing of the release is critical, your aim point is moving across the ground relatively slowly. So you do have some margin for error. Now, when you're level bombing at low level, on the other hand, you have a very high aspect view of the target from any distance, if you can see it at all. You're approaching at very high speed, probably 500 knots or more, meaning that you're covering a kilometer, a thousand meters in about four seconds. 
you have a very small window in which to re, uh, in which to release the bombs, and that release point is critically dependent on your altitude, your speed, your angle of flight, and any g forces you happen to be pulling at the time. So truly, if you're looking for accuracy, good consistent dive bombing technique is a better way to get it than screaming over the target at 500 feet and 500 knots. So why would we use high drag bombs? Well, the primary reasons are probably surprise and self-protection. When dive bombing, if you can see the target for a long time, <laughs> defenders in the target area can see you. If the target is reasonably stationary in your field of view, then guess what? You are stationary, or at least moving predictably, in the sights of the defenders in the target area. Neither of these things is good for a long and prosperous life of a fighter pilot. Similarly, arriving at altitude or climbing to achieve it will give defenders lots of warning that you're coming and lots of time to prepare. And again, well-warned and well-prepared are not desirable traits in a defender as far as an attacker is concerned. On the other hand, approaching from near-zero altitude at a high rate of knots gives defenders, even those with radar, very little chance to prepare. By the time they see you come over the horizon, you're already a long streak of smoke going past them. Fast-moving, low-level targets also present extremely challenging targets, even for well-trained gunners who are trying to track you manually. I mean, radar helps, but it still t requires time to lock on and determine a firing solution, time which you are working very hard not to give it. So flying low and flying fast should give you significant protection against unguided AAA. Now, by the way, uh, it's arguable how well DCS models some of these effects. My own personal opinion is that DCS seriously overestimates the ability of the average 23mm gun crew to engage a rapidly moving low-level target, but that's a topic for another video. The bottom line is that high drag bombing is a very effective technique if you want to hit an easily identifiable area target with as little warning as possible, exposing yourself to ground fire for as little time as possible. Oh, and you know, it's also an excuse to fly at zero feet and 500 knots while dispensing death from nowhere in particular. And who doesn't need more excuses to do that? Okay, enough theory. Why don't we uh, get ourselves out to the runway and get out to the range? We are loaded with uh, a small load of high drag bombs. Again, I, I just uh, didn't want to load up on all four hard points just because it makes it harder to actually see the center of the concentration of the bomb. So we'll be carrying eight uh, bombs for him on each uh, inner hard point for this uh, exercise. Headed out to the runway. Once again, we're going to go out to the range. Now, um, we're not going to use a totally tactical approach, but uh, since there's really no point in dropping high drag bombs from uh, high altitude, we are going to be using low altitude approaches today, which will uh, not only demonstrate how to drop the bombs, but I think will also demonstrate some of the challenges that you will face when you are trying to do this because, like I said, it's not really about the bombs themselves or the way they fall, it's really about the attack profile you're going to be in. You're going to be approaching the target very low uh, and very fast and it's just hard to see the target and time your approach or even line up your approach properly. Now the Viggen does have some tools that are going to make this easier and uh, it, we'll look at those when we get down to the range. Basically it uses uh, CCIP continuously computed impact point uh, pipper, actually a very simple, effective uh, pipper that's going to help us get the rounds on the target, but it isn't going to help us get lined up with the target. Anyways, let's just get off the runway here. We'll talk briefly about the switch switchology we're going to have to use to drop the bombs. And we'll also just uh, talk a little bit about how we're going to run the practice today. So, we're off the runway and the gear is coming up. Just need to uh, build up some speed here and also get lined up on our first waypoint. Once we get ourselves climbing out properly, I will just uh, roll the tape forward to the point where we're getting ready to start our first uh, attack run. Okay, I think we are finally got ourselves worked out here. Let's start gaining some altitude. Okay, here we are getting ready for our first run. In terms of setting up the switches, it couldn't be easier. 
Once you have the high drag bombs on board, you just have to leave the mode selector switch to bomb plan. We're not going to use A and F mode when we attack. We're just going to unsafe the trigger, and that's going to give us the pipper right there on the HUD. So that couldn't be easier. The one thing you do have to do, which I uh, have done off camera, is to set the QFE altitude properly. And you have to be careful because the altitude uh, setting now uh, on the altimeter may not be quite correct because we're trying to use the altitude of the target, although in this case it should be pretty close. Our um, altitude on this first run is going to be a little bit high, just as we're getting used to this, uh, so we can actually see the target from a distance back. And again, that's really the hardest part about being accurate with high drag bombs. It's uh, getting yourself lined up on the target far enough back that you can actually cross over top of the target, because you really don't have a lot of time to make adjustments once you get close. And for a target like this buried in the woods, it's just pretty hard to see where the target is. We're pretty much relying on the HUD to get us lined up. Here it comes. We are in a shallow dive. It still should be all right. And there's the pipper. And basically the bombs are going to fall between the dot and the circle. There they go. And there they are. So that was a pretty good drop. We basically covered the 50 meter circle from uh, front to back, right over top of the target, maybe a little bit to the right of the target. If we want to see the numbers, we'll get uh, an indication here from the target information tracking script in a minute. Take a look and see what it thinks. Okay, so the main point of impact of the group of bombs was a little forward and right, nothing really to worry about there. Um, but interesting to note that we were at 500 feet, 500 knots, which is kind of a standard uh, release parameters for High drag bombs, we were uh, headed downhill a little bit, three and a half degree pitch. Uh, but overall that looked like a pretty standard drop. So uh, you want to fix that kind of sight picture in your mind. That's what you're looking for. You don't want to drop too much lower than that. Uh, partly because it's just really, the lower you go, the harder it is to see the target. Uh, a little bit faster, especially in the vegan, prob probably could be something we could uh, try to do. But I think that was a pretty good set of drop parameters. Okay, let's take another run and do it slightly differently this time. Um, I'm adjusting here in the cockpit. Sorry, I don't have the video of me doing it. I'm, I'm changing the interval between the bombs a little longer. Uh, not quite as uh, to the maximum, but about uh, a couple of clicks short of the maximum. Now we're going to take a run at those uh, three targets on the right-hand side of the target area, which are really uh, intended for doing a kind of linear drop. And of course, that's one of the real advantages of the high drag bombs, is they are very good if you're trying to hit a linear target, is you can distribute the bombs over a fairly long area. It will caution you about turning up the interval too far. Uh, if you do, you're going to spend a long time dropping bombs, which may not be what you want to do in an aggressively defended area. So let's put the coals to her a little bit here, see if we can get the speed up a little higher. Try and get lined up. I like our altitude. Here we go, wait for the pipper to come up. Here it comes. And there they go. And as you can see, it takes the bombs a little while to drop. I covered a nice long line down through the target, so I'd say that's another successful drop. Let's just take a look and see how it compares on the target information tracking script data. And this is why I find it really useful to do this stuff on the range, rather than just going out and setting up a line of targets. Uh, it is helpful, I find, to be able to compare your release parameters uh, as well as your accuracy. And you can see we were a little bit lower, a little bit faster, probably closer to what we really want to be in the Vigan. Uh, and you can see the pattern was about half again as long. It was 130 mils the last time, it was over 200 mils this time. So we did spread the bombs out a longer distance. Okay, so let's do one more run here, and this time let's take out a slightly more realistic target. There's a line of vehicles down there mimicking a convoy, and we're going to take it as if it was a target of opportunity because we don't have a waypoint defined over top of the target. So this is also going to be an exercise in showing just how difficult it is to be able to line up on a target like that. And, you know, we're doing it, we're starting out a little bit higher, picking up the target and then dropping down to our drop altitude. Um, this would be pretty near impossible if we were coming at the target already uh, low and fast. So 
you know, essentially in the vegan, if you're going to do um, the vegan thing, where you fly low and fast the whole way, you're only really going to be able to use this bombing mode if you have a very good intelligence about what you're dropping on, and and good survey uh, and your uh, your navigation system is well aligned so that you can uh, be sure that you're aiming at the target because you're only going to have fractions of a second to correct anything if you're not online. Now in this case, we know where the targets are, even though we don't have a waypoint on them. So I'm pretty sure I'm fairly close to lined up on them. Once again, trying to get down nice and low, get the speed up. Wait until I can see the trucks. It looks like them there. Here we go. Try and put the bombs right across the middle of them there. All right, let's see how we did. Ooh, looks like we got a few of them anyways. Okay, that's going to do it for today. I'd say that's three fairly successful attacks. Uh, good examples of how you can use high drag bombs in the Vigan. Uh, not really very complicated to set up. Um, the challenge in doing it, as I keep saying, is really trying to figure out how to fly an approach so you actually get yourself over the target where you want to be, when you want to be. Um, so this is also going to wrap it up for our uh, videos on actually using uh, iron bombs in the Vigan. We'll go on to some of the more exciting weaponry in the next uh, series. As always, if you like the videos, please like and subscribe. And for now, this is going to be Cyclone. Signing off.